Ooh, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. What is up, Spurs Nation? Welcome to another episode of Drive Through Spurs Takes. This time, we in the drive through. Get a 12 count meal. What beverage? Uh, Powerade, but instead of the fries, can I get a salad, a side salad? Uh, what dressing? Uh, let me get the avocado lime ranch. Avocado and what beverage? Uh, the Powerade. It's hotter than a mother down here in South Texas right now. My ankles are sweating. I didn't know that can even happen. My ankles are sweating. Chicken nuggets with a side salad. No bread, no fries. 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 Makes me feel a little bit lighter inside. Ladder inside. Thank you. <clears throat> they didn't have any Powerade, so I had to get that sweet tea. Come on now. We in Texas, baby. We in South Texas. We like our sweet tea. Sweet, baby. What I want to see out of LaMarcus Aldridge and um, DeMar DeRozan is something special. Something that that we've seen only in flashes last season. I want to see it more consistently. I think these two guys, um, you know, working that mid-range game that we want we want them to do, I think it's pretty potent. I think they both average, you know, 21 points a game. So the buckets are there. LaMarcus Aldridge is a hell of a defender, underrated defender. And with Timmy back in the gym, Timmy's going to teach him how to affect shots because I know you guys remember Timmy uh, down there in the post. On the defensive end, he changes things. Ooh. He changes things, right? So he is able to just, he's so smart. And I think that's thats the IQ that needs to rub off on LaMarcus Aldridge. But he already does a pretty stellar job of protecting the paint while he's the only big in there and being a help defender while he's in there with Jakob, right? Um, but DeMar DeRozan, can he be a better defender? That's the question. Can he? I don't know. Can he? Uh, he's he kind of is what he is. It's 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 my expectations are kind of dimmed on that notion because that's I think what we need. We don't like if we can have him step up on the defensive end. And look, he plays hard, but. I don't know what it is. Is it just that we ask so much of him on the offensive side where his energy isn't there? Because his efforts there, I want to say, it's it's more of like his closeouts are kind of eh. He gets beat off the dribble. I feel like anyone can beat DeMar DeRozan off the dribble. Um, DeMar DeRozan can beat anyone off the dribble as well. Like I'm not trying to you know, tip for tat here, but if he cannot be a defensive liability and if he can guard the, the other team shooting guard a small forward i think that that's what's going to be huge if he can turn the knob up a little bit on the dial of being a defensive stopper then we can have a two-way player out of him that's what's going to elevate our consistency especially on the defensive end because you know we have Brent forbes in there who's trying his hardest who's who's getting bigger putting on that size that girth he's getting that weight room you know what I'm saying? So, like, DeMar DeRozan is also so physically gifted that it's it's a question mark on why and if they never asked him to do so in Toronto and we asked him, you know, year one, hey, look, we don't need you to be a great defender, just be a good defender, you know, and over time we're going to get you where you need to be. Uh, hopefully hopefully that's the thing because cause we handle DeMar, I feel, a lot different than we handle any other free agent that we've had. I mean, even LaMarcus Aldridge, his first year, two years with us was, remember, he wanted out because we were like demanding all these things from me. We, we wanted him to play a certain type of way. Pop did. And Pop has already, you know, came out and said that that was a bad move on his part that, you know, he tried to turn him into John Havlicic or whatever. And, um, you know, instead of keeping LaMarcus, LaMarcus and, and working with what we got because we're get, we get finished products. And that's why the Spurs aren't always out to get free agents because we get finished products and 
and there's ceilings there on on I don't know on on wanting to get better to change your game you know like LaMarcus we we ended up turning that situation around um for the better and our coaching staff had to adjust to him and I think that's kind of what we did with DeMar DeRozan we adjusted to DeMar right we wanted DeMar DeRozan to to fit in we wanted him to feel like he can contribute right away and the we wanted to shorten that learning curve that's that takes about two seasons to fully understand with San Antonio we wanted to, to shorten that a little bit so we we ran a lot of ISO plays for DeMar probably more than we ever did for anybody like other than Tim Duncan which is an ISO play for Tim Duncan is just getting him the ball in the block or the mid or the mid post um, but for any guard like Kawhi Leonard, we didn't run that many uh, um, ISO plays for him. You know, while he was here, Tony Parker didn't get that many uh, ISO plays either. They play within the system, right? That's what we do in San Antonio. We play within the system. But I feel like last year we tweaked that a little bit to ease in DeMar. Now that he's in here, he has year one under his belt. The concepts, the terminology should be there. And now I feel like we need to ask more of him on the defensive end. We need. I mean, he's a pretty good help defender. It's just on ball. You know what I mean? And help meaning that that he can get a couple of steals, getting out in passing lanes, deflecting some balls and whatnot. And um, he he has that. You know, that's a good tool in his tool belt. But he needs to st- uh, step it up on the defensive end. That's defensively what we need out of these two guys. You know, offensively. They already give it. They give it to us already. Now, do th- do they need to stretch the floor for themselves a little bit? They could really help themselves out. They can really help themselves out uh, by shooting a couple more threes. Demar shooting them in, in in practice in the summer. We'll see, man. We'll see. I don't believe anything I see in the summer really. Like, you know someone's working on this or that I, I don't believe until I see it on the on the NBA floor but I want to see him take more threes especially early on in the season I want him to try you know he doesn't have to come out right away and we shouldn't expect him to look if we see DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge shooting a few more threes a game I think that's a win I think that's a win there um in the beginning of of the season don't get like we shouldn't be critical if they don't go in that's fine Let's work on making them go in at a higher clip after the All-Star break. But let them shoot it. Let them both shoot it. Let them get comfortable in it. And losing Davis Bertans, man, hurts a lot. And I was, I was thinking about it yesterday on, on another video. Bryn Forbes and, and Marco Bellinelli are, are our two pro- probably best three-point shooters out there with Patty Mills. And then you got Damari Carroll who can shoot it really well. Uh, Rudy Gay can shoot it really well and, and, and all that. But... But man, wouldn't it be great if we had two more guys, you know, in our on our starting five who can stretch the floor and also attack and work the mid range? You know, like let's com- complete the trifecta. That's what Kawhi did. Kawhi was mid range too, and then in the last like two years with us, he added that three ball, and and that kind of elevated him to unstop the unstoppable level. Like you can't guard him because either he's gonna get to his spot in the mid range, he's gonna get to the ring uh, to the rim. Or he can also now pull up from three and, and hit it at a high clip. So let's let's push for these two guys shooting a little bit more threes. Let's not be critical when they don't go in at first. All right. So that's that's offense and defense with these two guys. And other than that, keep doing what they're doing. They they balled out last season for us. And I can't help but but be thankful for the stats that they put up man and they hit you know they each hit a couple game winners they had big games last year LaMarcus had a career high against OKC um I think DeMar DeRozan had like two or three game winners you know what I mean so it was it was was a good season it was a good season on the offensive end let's just try to be a little bit more dynamic as a duo and I think they will two guys with the right mindset they're coachable and uh let's get it boys let's get it go Spurs go Make sure to follow, subscribe, um, rate. Go follow our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast gem on. We're there. Like down here, all this stuff down here. Subscribe, like, don't like, whatever it is. Tell me what it is. Leave some comments. Do you agree? What do you think, right? I like getting on there responding back to y'all. So, go Spurs go for the culture. Go Spurs go, Spurs Nation. We're about to get another season going, and I cannot wait. 
to ride or die with y'all, right? A bucking Spurs podcast, baby. Drive through Spurs takes. <laughs>